All right, everyone, welcome, 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 welcome to today's episode of The Shift. Uh, we are sharing helpful insights in freight technology, and I am here with my good friend, Mustafa Azizi from Zoom. We're going to talk about the Zoom app, right, which is digitizing. Hold on, let me, let me say it exactly how you say it. A complete digital brokerage operations platform. Right. So um, we're going to talk about what that means. Right. Because that's just kind of high level. We're going to get into the story. So first, uh, Mustafa, welcome to the show, man. Thanks for the invite. I really appreciate it. For sure. For sure. All right. So let's talk a little bit about your background before we get into Zoom and, and what the product does. Tell me a little bit about yourself, a little about your background. All right. Uh, I was born in Afghanistan. My dad was a general with 40,000 troops. We defected into the United States in 1989. Grew up in uh, San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, went to school at UC Berkeley, uh, worked at the Afghan embassy for a little while, uh, got a job at J.B. Hunt, started working at J.B. Hunt um, for about six years, started on the operations side, ended on the product side. Um, then I was the chief operating officer for a fleet of 50 trucks with a warehouse, um, saw the other side of the coin over there. And then uh, we uh, founded Zoom uh, almost um, 7.25 years ago. Mm. And <laughs> Our goal was to try to bring the whole industry together on one uh, super platform. Whoa. So so you said your dad was a general of over 40,000 troops. We can't just gloss over that, man. That's crazy. Like, what's, what's, your, what's your dad's name? Do we do we know him? Have we heard of him? No, I mean, like he was part of the um, Afghan King's Army and he overthrew the king in 1979 as the first tank as a lieutenant in there. And then he was promoted to a five star general, won two silver stars and then I don't know if you know about Afghanistan, but um, they were taken over by Russia or Soviet Union for about 20 years. And he became a general in the Afghan Soviet Army. And then he was the first Afghan general uh, from the Soviet Army to defect into the Western world. Oh, wow. Wow. Name, um, he's uh, he's still alive. Uh, OK. OK. Artist, now, how, how old were you when all that was going on? I was about um, so I lived in Afghanistan until I was four and a half. Okay. And I used to go on a lot of campaigns with my dad to visit his friends and stuff like that. So you don't forget when you're like in a line of 15 tanks. Uh, I have a lot of memories about like maybe 150, 200 memories. Um, yeah, it was pretty crazy. Um, also, when we came to the um, America, uh, we went through Moscow and we had to like kind of tell them that we're going there for a family vacation and then slip out. And then when we were going into Hungary, um, they stopped the train because we didn't have visas. And they were going to deport my dad back to Afghanistan. And, and But then my dad had his full uniform on and he just like yelled at them and they continued the train. And we went through Hungary without visas. And then we got to a country called Yugoslavia that's now like 10 countries. And that's where uh, my dad defected in the uh, United Nations. Got it. Got it. Wow. Crazy background. All right. So so did you go to you go to college? Where did you go to college? Yeah. UC Berkeley. Uh, UC I Berkeley. Studied, I studied. Right. So and you said you studied what? Supply chain economics and um, philosophy of all things. Got it. And then you got out of college. You went to work for J.B. Hunt. Yeah. All right. And tell me about what you're doing there again. So um, I started as an operator just uh, trying to get trucking companies to take loads from our customers. Um, then I became a regional manager. Then I became a director of a branch. And then I was part of the product team testing out different softwares. OK. And what year was this? Um, I started there in uh, 2010. Um, okay. And, uh, was with them about six or seven years. Why'd you leave? Um, essentially because, okay, so if you look at the game, right, uh, of a broker, and JB Hunt was the largest uh, broker that was competing with like Coyote and CH Robinson, there's three sides of the coin. There's the shipper. Uh, there's the broker in the middle that manages the relationship and then the trucking company. And I always felt like we were focusing on building better things for the manufacturer or the shipper, but we weren't really focused on optimizing the back office of the brokerage. And we weren't really focused on um, optimizing the relationship with the trucking company. And I saw apps like Uber Freight and Cargomatic and Salesforce come out. And I was like, why doesn't somebody build a trucker sales force to manage all the 800,000 trucking companies and try to automate it in a way that you could have a brokerage that normally has a hundred people and trim it down to 10 people. But it, while you do that, improve efficiencies of profit and service. Got it. Got it. So, so you actually left to start your product zoom. Yeah. So 
when I left JB Hunt, uh, I was a I was an operating officer for a fleet. Uh, one of my friends um, owned a trucking company at 50 trucks. Okay. So that was a huge learning moment because while I was uh, building Zoom, um, I could sit in the truck with his trucks and drive to Seattle and test out the application. Because what we did is we built a five-sided platform in that um, the trucking companies can have web on their computer, iOS, or Android. Because uh, if you look at most of the trucking companies, they're small guys, so they don't use a lot of EDI and technology. That way we can leverage them through some kind of technology. Then we also have a platform for the shipper and the broker. So by connecting all five of those, hopefully you can get rid of phone calls and emails and drive down the operational efficiency of a brokerage. Got it. Now, did you have a tech background at all? You said you studied supply chain and logistics in school, right? No, absolutely not. <laughs> uh, so... My best friend at the time uh, was uh, had a startup that failed, and he was came from the Silicon Valley mindset of product market fit, and nobody building technology, and I mean that in our industry, is coming from the agile development perspective. What they say in Google or Facebook when they're building these products is come out with a hypothesis and then launch the cheapest, fastest thing you can and then A, B test until you build an enter enterprise best in class Salesforce type of tool. Mm. Most of the people in our industry that build stuff, they used to work as a broker and then they get some money from investors and then they go hire an offshore team and then they tell them exactly how to build the whole ship. Um, in the way we did it is we just started from one cabin in the ship and then we built out the Titanic from there. Mm, got it. So in 2017, what did that uh, MVP, that minimum viable product look like for you? Yeah, so um, it was just the mobile application connected to the shipper. And then we were like, wait a minute, don't we need something in the middle to manage this? Uh, and then we started building out the three sided platform. OK, got it. So the, the goal is just for people kind of just joining in and looking. The, the goal of Zoom is to do what? Let's kind of put it in context again. Yeah. So if you look at most shippers or trucking companies or brokerages, our focus right now is enterprise companies um, that have essentially over $50 million of business top line that they're operating. Um, uh, we have tools for the the under 50 and we plan to scale those out eventually, but we, we have to come out with enough customers. Um, so what our goal with that is, is to take, let's say, for example, um, you look at the whole brokerage industry, they operate four to six uh, loads per operator per day on average. Um, like not going to throw out any names or anything like that. But my point is, how can you get a broker or a trucking dispatcher to manage 500 loads a day by himself through the RoboCop model? Mm. Um, everybody looks at our industry as really high top line, but no profits. And they don't want to invest in our industry. So I want to change that status quo through building a platform that you could unitary use your own business, but eventually that platform can connect to the other platforms that we sell and we can build out the network of networks. So what, what does that mean for the, the brokers then? Because if they're able to handle, you know, if one broker is able to handle more capacity, right? Is that, is that a good or a bad thing for the brokers? Um, it's really good because let's say you look at um, a traditional brokerage and they do $5 billion of, top line business and then they make um, they operate five loads per broker per day um, and they have a bunch of salespeople and whatnot and you see in those bullpen rooms when they have like 500 people with two screens why do you need two screens <laughs> right you know but my point is like the reason they need two screens is because they're multitasking fast like that and 80 percent of the brokers can't operate like the good brokers so what this tool would do is let that 80 percent run like the best horses on the whole team. And then what that would do is number one, it would drive down their operational expenses. So taking, um, let's say you take a big trucking company, right? And you take down 30% uh, of their operational uh, costs. You don't have to eliminate that overhead. You could turn them into sales or whatever you wanted to, right? But essentially now you're, you're lowering their cost of doing business. At the same time, because their hands free up, they could help the customers more. So you're increasing the customer sales by an average of 20%. Right. Now, what happens with those two, um, that's like a culmination of maybe three or four more percent profit to the bottom line. 
but where we really home run it is that trucker built in Salesforce by acquiring the carriers faster and getting to more carriers uh, faster without phone calls and emails, you can get a better buy. So people always say like, if your customer, let's say, for example, is Ford, Ford is always going to pay the same rate and the carriers are always going to be at the same rate. Is that really true if you go to all 800,000 trucking companies in one minute? No, you're going to get a way better margin, right? right? So now getting a better margin through digital acquisition with the trucking companies, you're getting a better operational ratio from your own employees, right? And you're getting more efficiency from your connection to your uh, customers, then you should be able to operate a brokerage at 35% gross profit. And if you do that, then you, your EBITDA that you take home at the end of the day goes away from between 4 and 8% and increases to maybe 12 to 18%. Now, if you reflect that on a small trucking company, that's huge gains. If you reflect that on a giant trucking company, shipper, or uh, brokerages, then what that means is that their EBITDA might even double. And if their EBITDA doubles, their stock price in the stock market is going to double because they're going to be seen as a digital asset. If you took all the business that a big trucking company has right now and dump it on a company like Salesforce, Facebook, or Uber Freight, then essentially their valuations will go through the roof. The problem with the digital brokers, as I see it, is that they're burning a lot of money and they forgot to build that third piece to make their back office more optimal. I know some digital brokerages that are operating between two and four loads per operator per day. That's not the point. Um, our goal and our technology shows that you can get right now, we've gotten with all the tech stack we've built, we've gotten to 18 to 20 per operator per day on the hardest operating freight with the most bells and whistles. But um, our goal is to push to 40 loads per operator per day this year. And every year as we our technology gets more robust, um, we also bring in partners into our application. So just like an iPhone, right? If I was for the first time ever gonna explain the iPhone to you, and I told you everything the iPhone has, you totally be like overwhelmed. But just remember that digital brokerage in a box for the shipper, trucking company, and the brokers like an iPhone. What we did is we built an app store and we built an iTunes to it. The iTunes is the marketplace where it connects you to the trucking companies. The iPhone is the TMS system that we enable you with. And then the app store is a third party store where all your friends can pay, play in there. For example, Zoom gives you everything you need, billing, pricing, mobile tracking, uh, document management, email management, you name it, we have it, okay? Um, but I'm gonna, I always sell to a customer and they still wanna use a tr another third party tracking app even though ours is free. And that's okay because we don't have to be the end all and be all to everybody. And now all the people that would indirectly compete with us live in our app store. And eventually the digital brokers will live in there. And now that everybody has this little holy trinity of their own, why don't we just digitally connect all the holy trinities and build out the network of networks? Sounds like a lot, man. It sounds, sounds like a lot going on inside of one app. How, how does, uh, okay, if, if you can break it down in layman terms, how does the technology work? Like what, what is driving this behind the scenes? Yep. So, um, so if you look at all the new scalable best technology in the world, it's, uh, it's platform technology. Um, and what that means is that it's multiple stakeholders working together on digital platforms. So with the trucking companies, as I mentioned, they get iOS, Android, web. If the guy doesn't want to download our app, we can just talk to him via SMS or emails. So our, our app speaks old world and new world. It's not like AI replacing our industry. It's RoboCop enabling our industry to fight off the, the, the digital brokers that are coming in to kill us. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially, we're the first company in the world to enable our own industry with better technology than the Silicon Valley guys coming in to displace us. So we just wanted to be the first company to help our industry rather than come in and say we want to disrupt our industry. We have enough disruptions in our industry. We have driver shortage. We have uh, their, their ages are uh, going up. We have a fragmentation problem. We have old technology problem. We have empty miles problem. We have carbon footprint problems. We have fuel problems. Why do we need these guys coming in and trying to disrupt 
our industry and further fragment us when there could be a better technology that's more robust than them coming in, enabling our industry to work together towards a common cause. So shipper has a tool, broker has a tool, trucking company has a tool. They're all connected and they execute business in that. I can even show you if you'd like to see. Yeah, I'd love to see if you can if you could show us um, for sure. Go ahead and share. Okay. We you can always show us better than you can tell us, right? That's what they say. Yeah, and I talk about that. <laughs> um, can you see my screen? <clears throat> Not yet. Oh, here we go. Let me. That's on me. Let me add it. There we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yep. No problem. We're inside. So, yes, you are. So one thing we really focused on is um, user interface. Like we want it to be really easy to understand, looks good, flows well. With our system, um, the most important thing that comes with it is we have something called Zoom University, which is unlimited training forever. Okay. 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 Right. That's a huge differentiator. Now, is this, training, is this training on how to use the product or is this the additional training on like outside things? Just, just more so just how to use Zoom. Yeah, but okay. what happens is usually our customer asks us a lot of industry questions. <laughs> so we, we end up talking about both sides. But essentially, um, if you look at all, most of the customers in the world, they, they send, they use older systems and these loads that come in, they come in through um, EDI. So we accept old world stuff and new world stuff. Um, once the shipments comes in through EDI, so all of the technology we do is called API, and that's where the world should move to. API is faster technology. It's easier to adopt, and it's easier to set up. So let's say, for example, um, Ramel, you're like, you have 100 employees. It, you're so scared of what system you buy and how you change out of your other system. Uh, what we can, uh, what we've done for lar our largest customers, um, and our largest customers are Fortune 100s. Um, we've gotten them off their system in just a couple months, and that's unheard of. On top of that, um, just keep in mind, I have a Zoom demo platform here. When the customer gets this, um, they get their own uh, user interface. So all the branding, all the flavor cons on top of the, everything changes to the customer's view. Got so it. Now, now their employees think that um, they built that technology and it doesn't really matter. Even if you look at any brokerage that has their own technology with their own branding, they paid someone else to build it, you know? So essentially we're doing that for them without cost overnight. Um, so you get a seamless digitally branded marketplace um, and it's launched within a week um, for larger brokers. They want some integrations to older technologies like EDI and whatnot. So it takes us a little bit longer, like a couple months to launch them, but that's way better than like a year. Now, all the stuff we have in here, right? You could track the truck. Um, Zoom has built-in document management. Uh, we have OCR technology where um, our technology can read emails, can read customer portals, and can read documents without any human interaction. We manage every type of move, um, LTL, truckload, intermodal, ocean, air. So if I was going to build a shipment here, hopefully um, you could see how the shipment moves. Um, it moves really quick. I would just put the customer price, 900 bucks. Uh, I'd book this order. I'd put an appointment pending. I saw one person put in an order on another system and it took them like five minutes. <laughs> you know, like how the yellow box, I'm talking to you, right? While I'm doing this. And I just follow the yellow boxes with my mind. And if I miss something, the system just pushes you to that thing. And then that's it. That load gets booked in the system. I mean, that's mm. gotta be the fastest load booking ever in the world. And like, let's say I have a customer uh, load coming in here. Um, I can go to the trucker Salesforce tab, which is called carriers, and I can launch a dedicated freight routing guide, which I don't have set up here, but I can also go to my carriers that have already done this load for me before. And because my emails are in this same platform, I can just type up an email and send them that load. And, and this is me operating as a broker. Now at the same point, um, we automated like pricing. You've heard of pricing apps out there. Everything that you would buy third party, we've built into it as one tool. So like when you get an iPhone, right, it comes with Apple Maps. Just think of pricing as Apple Maps. But at the same point, if you want Waze, Google Maps, we have we have all these guys in our app store, like DATs are dear and good friend. Same with Truck Stop, same with Sonar. Why do we have to be the end all and be all? We just want to be the aggregation point in the industry where you can use everything. 
So when you first set up this tool, you go to our app store and everybody that you like is living in our app store. So we can connect it to our own accounting system down here. Look at our accounting system. You got an aging report. Um, you got um, invoices, bills, and we can integrate to any third party accounting system as well. So from this app, you could pay carriers with ACH credit cards or checks right from here. Um, and then on top of that, um, we have the coolest part of our app, which is our marketplace. Um, within this marketplace, uh, let me pick a date range. I don't know. Let's go tomorrow. See, uh, not only is it posted on our marketplace, but it's posted on our friends' marketplaces. Um, in the beginning, when Peep Airbnb came out, nobody would go on their website. So they partnered with uh, Craigslist, and that's how they got their name out there. The same way we do that. So when this bid comes in, um, we can take this bid from DAT. In this case, it was logged manually by a broker, or we can have the bids come in from our carrier tool. And so let me show you what the carrier tool looks like. We have this in English and Spanish and web. So this is going to be cool. Uh, <laughs> and this is a live demo here for you. Okay, I love it. I love it. Um, hopefully you could see by now like how the app moves and how things it is. Yeah, it, um, it is, man. I love it. So, um, and and my, am I losing you or is it very? No, nah, keep going. If if I need you to slow down for a minute, I'll I'll slow you down. But my point is, the app kind of trains you how to use it. Like you don't need to. Uh, I remember I was part of this other TMS that we tried at uh, JB Hunt, and I had to train my team for three months just to how to use simple modules, and that was so annoying. Right. It pushes you to what you need, and it it kind of it kind of the it, it kind of pokes you like, hey, you need to go here. You need to go there. It's, it's the yellow boxes are popping up and so forth. I like yep. that. But it's deep too, like an iPhone. You can go so deep with it. So let's say I want to bid on this load. And now on the right, you're the trucking fleet manager. And on the left, you're the broker or the shipper. We're agnostic. So let's say I want to review this bid. That bid comes in. We can have an AI respond or you can respond yourself. You say, no, I want to give it to you for 700 And then I'll book that order. And that's where you send the carrier the packet. So we have our own carrier onboarding, but we still work with RMIS and everybody. Um, you, uh, we have our own tracking. We have our own fleet management. Uh, I'm going to assign my available driver. And now all the stuff a broker would manually do with those people, like setting up the rate con, putting the financials, all that's done automatically. Mm. So you just sign the, the document here. And then um, once you sign that document, um, you're like, hey, where's that document? Did the carrier sign it? Yeah, man, it's here. Just let the app work and <laughs> don't worry about it. What about financials? I need to set up the finance. Nope, it's all here. You don't have to touch this thing. So now um, we can also do geofencing. So basically, if that guy's like arriving at the pickup and he gets within a certain location, it'll mark him loaded. But you and I both know trucking's not that simple like a ride share. And this is where the digital brokers got left in the wind and why they spend so much money every month and burn that money. Mm. We, we have depth. So let's say he wants to report a detention. Our app reminds the trucking company when he's due detention. And then let's say, for example, um, I have a lumper, right? Uh, and I get to the shipper and like this guy helps me load the truck up yeah. and charges me some money. And now I want my money as a trucking company because that came out of my pocket. Um, so essentially, I would say at the pickup, there's a $150 lumper. But then, the, the, you know, brokers and the customer, they're like, hey, man, we need that. <laughs> we need a picture. Yeah. So so boom, PDF. Treat an invoice. Yeah, man. And then um, you just upload that and look at the speed. OK, so like uh, before that guy even thinks to email that carrier that he needs that, it's right there. All of it's there. You approve it save it confirm it it's already in your financials and the wow. carrier and then on top of that this is a part my one of my favorite parts i'm going to skip 85 percent of our app and just go <laughs> so everything we do for the trucking company or the logistics user or the shipper we try to gamify it and um the thing that makes good uh logistics employees is proactiveness attention to detail right and and response time so the app helps you with that, but how can we also incentivize the human 
to become that RoboCop. So over here, you can see Sky, uh, and we divide this by sales, operations, and, and back office. So they have different KPIs. But if you look at a good broker, right, for Coyote or Enterprise, they're, they're going to be rated on how much gross profit they're making, how their service is running, and how much density they're getting. So for us, we build coins and algorithms that automatically, without any setup, measure their efficiencies. And then you can control these and the rewards. So you could see that this person is getting an award over here on their paycheck. And then if they um, have seven service fails, like Super Mario Brothers, they won't be qualified for that. But at the same time, because they're using repeat carriers, um, the company's doing better, so they get rewards for that. Mm. Now, that's what I call a win-win situation. That's now, a win. Yep. And then that, now let's say the trucking company comes to us, right? And they're like, hey, I see what you're doing for the brokers and the freight forwarders. What can you do for me? Well, I can launch you with the same system. Okay. Now, when you want to send the carrier packet, you just click this once, put the broker's name and phone, email, boom, sent. At the same time, you can manage your shipments, your fleet, your drivers, your trucks, your trailers. Well, how is this different? It's agnostic. It means you can put all your customers and all your brokers in here. So now on top of that, we built in the first ever carrier TMS with a marketplace. So imagine that like eventually half the brokers use Zoom. Now all the trucking companies just see their loads directly here. And then we could also bring in DAT and truck stop in here as our friends. Wow. So, so the network of networks starts forming. Um, and how would you connect with people in the network and networks? We want to get rid of the term onboarding and say connect. So we built the connection module like you would on LinkedIn here. Okay. And then we built an AI backhaul finder that builds your backhaul list as a trucking company. Half, like the biggest problem in our industry is empty miles, right? Um, I was talking to one customer that had 2,000 trucks, a shipper that had 2,000 trucks. And they told me that 40% of their trucks on a daily basis go back home empty. That's crazy. So that is crazy. AI, AI backhaul finder would automatically connect their backhaul list before they even build their backhauls with loads. And what's cool about this is, okay, let's say you put a load in here for CH Robinson, hypothetically, right? Um, now, CH Robinson takes you to Nashville. The AI backhaul finder says, hey, man, I know you go full coast to coast. I got a load that will take you to New York. But then right after that, I got another load from another broker or that same broker that will take you back to L.A. And he's like, well, what would be the profitability on that? We'll just click the math button. It'll do all the math for you and give you the profitability down here of rate per mile and et cetera. And then with one click, both those can be um, hooked up. And then the last piece is we built the same thing the shipper what if the shipper wants to operate like this so now the shipper can come in here and this is a, a fake platform okay got it it's a test platform that not fake but like a test one yeah so the the biggest problem of why shippers don't use digital brokers is because they have like 10 digital brokers they're working with does they do they have to go to everybody's portal why don't they just stay on their old sap or oracle um so now we fix that problem as well so over here, they could just run a quote and they would get their quotes from all their trucking companies, all their brokers, all in one place. So the mother of all. So they become Uber Freight in a sense. Yeah. And they, uh, so now, now you're talking about equal people. But then on top of that, like last year was 30% spot freight. This year it's 0% spot freight. So on our system, you can run contractual bids and get your carbon footprinting and everything. So A to Z. And then if a big shipper comes to us, we would be like, hey, this doesn't have to be the end all and be all. And uh, essentially, you can use this tool just to supercharge your existing stuff that you bought 30 years ago for $20 million. The only problem is that ours costs like 20 times less. <laughs> Got it, man. The The platform looks amazing, uh, first of all. Uh, so quick, quick question. Is, is there like CRM capabilities on there as well? Like if you wanted to automate email, anything like that? Yeah. We have built-in emails, built-in chat system, and that built-in CRM for the trucking company. If if you want, uh, we decided not to build Salesforce because we thought there's other people that do that better, like Zoho, Salesforce, it's uh, HubSpot. HubSpot, yeah. What we did is we put them on the App Store. 
because it would be a distraction. If we started to build Salesforce, then we'd lose the essence and we'd become like a digital broker just trying to burn money towards no end. The Got most it. important thing for us is how do we actually deploy quickly? How easy is it to train your employees? How scalable is it for your business being an enterprise? And what's the cost and what's the ROI? And for us, all five of those are home run. I, as a big uh, logistics company, right, you have really a couple choices. You could, number one, build your own, but that's like old news because now cheap money that was there for 40 years is gone. And now every CEO is like, how do we cut the $6 million a year that we're spending on technology? Uh, even if you're spending $6 million a year on technology, it's to no end because more bugs come up. You need more developers. All of a sudden, you become a tech company and you lose what you're good at, which was freight. So I don't think that's a, a way to go forward, um, in my opinion. Um, the other way is you can buy stuff off the shelf, but the problem is there's nothing um, comprehensive off the shelf and new. It's yeah. all made for smaller uh, four-people employee companies. You could try to build your own stack and piecemeal third parties, but then everybody has that, so how are you different? You could buy one of the three old guys that are like out of their way, kind of like getting phased out and not moving fast enough. The problem is the old guys that hold 80% of the market share, they've become kind of like Nokia. So, and they're not reinventing themselves fast enough and they can't ever because their core is rotten. Mm. They didn't build off product market fit, agile development. They built off a theory called waterfall. And when you do that, you kind of become like the Titanic. Um, and then, so we think- What's, what's the waterfall theory? I never heard that. Yeah, so if you recall, I told you um, uh, MVP theory is you start small and then you A-B test to a bigger product. Yep. Waterfall theory is you require all the success criteria over six months, you map this thing out, you go build it for two years and then you launch it. Got it. And then you go try to sell it. And then five years later, you come back and try to redo that and sell a new version to your customer see the difference with zoom is that if you get it you will never ever 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 need another software to buy down the line and when hmm. we do stuff on it um one of our customers just want a dynamic routing guide and um they helped us fund that but now the benefit goes to all our customers yeah so so you ever wake up in the morning and your iPhone is like brand new? <laughs> You're like, wait, how much was that? <laughs> right, right. How, how are you able to aggregate all these different load boards on the one platform? What, what incentivizes them to work with you? And do you have all the load boards on there? And how do you choose which ones you work with? Yeah. So one huge mistake that technology companies make is they forget to respect the people that have already paved the road for them. So we know that load boards that are out there have paved the road for us. So the first thing we did is we integrated with all the load boards, load board one, two, three, um, DAT, truck stop, neutral. We don't care. You, you have a source of capacity, trucker tools. You have a source of capacity. We will bring it into our app store. But keep in mind, we also give you your own internal load board that you can manage with your own carriers, brand it to your company. So that gives you an identity, uh, which is really nice. And are you able to uh, uh, use their data for for like your uh, pricing tools and so forth? Where are you getting that data from? No. So our data uh, for the pricing tool. So let's say you sign up with us, right? Um, and then you have to have one of the, your own data source. We don't want to take other people's data, repackage it and sell it. We just want to complement it and interface it. So for example, um, we do build a pricing algorithm for you and you could choose the base rate to be anywhere. It could be your own data stack, which big companies have. Um, it could be your history. It could be a third party. Um, like for example, you could ch uh, choose DAT rate view as your base rate because we've built DAT rate view all over our application. However, you have to pay DAT and be a customer of theirs. Got it. And let's talk about uh, the most important part, man. How much does this application cost? You said it's enterprise and you said you're working on some stuff for the smaller uh, carriers. But right now, what, what are your price points? About the same as what everybody else is charging, maybe even a little bit lower. So something better for a little bit less. OK. Imagine if the new Lucid came out as uh, wanted to beat Tesla and it was like 60K instead of 180. 
Right. That's the price. And if you go right now, like in our industry, the Chevys are going for like a hundred K. So essentially our application, I'll just tell you, it's two to 400 bucks per user per, uh, per month. Okay. Okay. And that's Is that based on size? Why the range? Um, because sometimes, um, you want more customization and more features than others. And then, um, some bigger organizations require more training and onboarding. We don't nickel and dime on any of that stuff and everything. Like if you go look at another TMS provider, they'll have an implementation fee, a database fee, an onboarding fee. If you want to turn on DAT, they're going to charge you for that. If you want to do each EDI, they're going to nickel, dime, nickel, dime, nickel, dime, nickel, dime until you can't even breathe. <laughs> right. Right. Um, for us, it's just one cost. It's pretty simple. Um, the only time we kind of get hosed is if you have like a million transactions a month uh, and two users. Well, that's not fair for us because the data would kill us. So we would do a transactional model in that case. Got it. Got it. What has been the biggest challenge for you guys over the last what four, five, six years you've been building now? <clears throat> yeah, um, I would say. That the challenges have been our blessings because uh, like, you know, the whole Michael Jordan failed to succeed theory. Um, the biggest challenge uh, for us has been getting our name out there and people understanding that there's a better, easier, faster, more comprehensive solution out there. Um, and the, the, unfortunately our industry is like, who do I go to church with or school with? And that's who I'm going to buy with. Who's my friend, not which one is going to make our employees careers better and help with our retention. So a lot of like favoritism and things like that, but over time, um, value reigns supreme. So now our, our, our name is getting out there and our customers are really happy. And also, um, you know, um, we were building this thing and it took us a while. It was a lot, you saw a lot of technology and you saw only about 10% of it. So time, time is always your enemy to get to the market, but I'm glad we didn't like blow up like uh, one of those other guys. Cause then we might've been stuck burning all that capital uh, and then the market shifted and that would have bit us in the butt. I think we're at the right place at the right time, helping our industry grow together. No, hundred percent. How are you guys funding, funding this project? So uh, we, uh, most of our investors are shippers, freight brokers, and trucking companies. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you ever want to invest in Zoom and you want to bring our industry together, you should always contact me and I'll get you involved some way. Um, I had a buddy that owned a trucking company. His check was a little bit smaller, but he had 150 trucks to bring to the pie and I, I let him in, you know, um, and, and that's the cool part is how can we build a company that we all co-own and, and and roll out. I could tell you that on our cap table, we have uh, some of the largest trucking companies in America, the largest brokerages and also the largest tech companies. Mm, mm. shippers. Wow. Wow. I yeah. love it, man. I love it. Well, you're definitely building something amazing for sure. Um, where can people connect with you and learn more about zoom and learn more about yourself personally? Yeah. So, um, I have a MySpace page. If you want I'm get out of here. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, um, you might be the only one, man. It might be no, just you. It'd be easy no, to my, find. <laughs> my name is Mustafa M U S T A F A at zoom that's z-u-u-m-a-p-p zoomapp.com i'm also on linkedin um you can also go to our website which is zoom z-u-u-m-a-p-p.com um yeah man and we're like we're like uh, black matter we're everywhere in everywhere and, and who are you looking for who, who are you looking for to contact you right now yeah so um any large enterprises that are looking to take their rooms and operational expenses or get closer to vendors and customers and get off their old tech stack and they're worried on how they do that, we can help them. Also, our system is modular, which means that you don't have to take all of Zoom. You could take a piece of it. Uh, we had one customer that really liked our carrier iOS, Android and web, and they connected it to their existing TMS. So we have a RESTful API um, that can connect to anything. The first thing we did in our company, um, like once we got big is we built this core engine behind the scenes that can connect to anything old world or new world. So that way we can build email scrapers. We can have text messaging. We can have EDI and API all live in the same world. Wow. Wow. 
Amazing. All right, man. Well, that brings us to the end. Um, we're going to conclude the show, but it was really great talking to you, man. Learn about the product. Thank you so much for the live demo. That was amazing. Um, guys, make sure you check this out. Check the replay out on YouTube as well. This has been another amazing episode of The Shift, sharing helpful insights and technology. Mustafa, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you guys next Thursday. Thanks, Romel. We can't do All it right. without. Take care. Bye.